Gretchen Dutschke searches for traces of protest, both past and present. In the late 1960s, she attended all the demonstrations. She'd come to West Germany as an American exchange student. Here, she fell in love with and married student leader Rudi Dutschke. His was the voice of protest. Revolution is a long, complicated process in which people must change. That's what he aimed to do back then, change himself and the world. People should live and love freely in peace and solidarity. Outside Berlin's Technical University, Gretchen encounters signs of today's protests. Higher wages for rent and champagne. Okay. <laughs> Times have changed. These days, student protest is more about money than politics. How did you manage to get 20,000 people out on the streets? We can't do that. It wasn't like that at first. There were other factors, too. The Vietnam War played a major role. Fifty years ago, she and her fellow students fought for big ideas. The 1968 student movement made politics popular. People wanted to get involved. Now they find politics useless. People were absolutely sure that they were on the right side of history and that they could achieve something, that we could achieve something. Wolfgang Wieland was one of those people. In 1967, as a first-year law student, he went to demonstrate in front of the Deutsche Oper in Berlin. The Shah of Iran was here on a state visit. Students came to protest against the dictator and his regime. Police used brutal tactics to control the crowd, fatally shooting student Benno Onezorg. Everyone felt that what happened to Benno Onezorg could have happened to them. They beat us without cause. It wasn't just the shots, a kind of massacre took place here. Germany's press also joined in the battle against the demonstrators, Axel Springer's Bild tabloid in particular. Ten months later, shots rang out again. This man gunned down student leader Rudi Dutschke, calling him a dirty communist pig. Dutschke survived, severely injured. When the Bild newspaper turned on someone, people believed it, and they let themselves get stirred up. Protests escalated in front of the Axel Springer building. In 1968, the German government passed emergency acts, which allowed basic rights to be curbed. Just two decades after the Nazi dictatorship ended, students were shocked by these laws. We were afraid that this short phase of democracy in West Germany would end again. But then came 1969 and Willy Brandt, the first social democratic chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany. A cultural revolution took place, slowly but inexorably. Whether it was raising children, the working world, or even love, things became more open, more liberal. Afterwards, it was a different state than it had been before. In 1979, Gretchen Dutschke's husband Rudi died from the after effects of the brain damage caused by the assassination attempt. Today, Gretchen Dutschke lives in a feminist housing project in Berlin. As a member of the Green Party, she continues to fight for a better world. To this day, I think the environment is our most pressing problem. Because without the world, we have nothing. Wolfgang Wieland chose to try to change the system from within. In 1978, he helped found Berlin's Green Party. Later, he even became Berlin's justice senator, official car and tie included. But he still attends demonstrations against right-wing extremism. In Germany, populists are gaining ground. During the last parliamentary elections, the far-right AFD party received 12 percent of the vote. In a sense, the AFD protests against the weakest members of society. They do it with populist themes, with racism, exclusion, and kicking people when they're down. Our protest was always against the higher-ups. They're 12 percent, and we're what, 88 percent? And they can't take that away from us. In 1980, 
In front of the Axel Springer Building, home to the Bild tabloid, there's now a Rudi Dutschke Street. The student protesters of old are now an integral part of the society they once fought against, then changed. They now defend it against attacks from the far right. Their battle continues.